Amen, amen, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Olaji Mugake, for sharing. Guys, start from where you are. Look at what she did, a pack of Ribena. I'm telling you, the, the blessing of being a blessing, the, is it the feeling, is it the emotions, is it the, is a lot. And I pray the Lord God will strengthen all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about, I want to begin the journey of talking about personal revival. We'll do it today. We're going to have activations tomorrow. For those that are new on the platform, we usually have prophetic activations training. Um, the Lord is speaking to, nudging me about dreams. We're going to look into dreams, interpretation or something like that tomorrow. And then we'll also practice word of knowledge as well. I will share. So we're going to do all of that. But today I want to talk about, let's start. So we've come from a journey of what the Lord is saying about, um, uh, about what God is saying about um, Ezekiel 37. After, after such a great time from Ezekiel 36, you come into a place, you find yourself in the valley of dry bones. And now we are in this place of a dry bones. And we're wondering, God, what is next? One of the things that we need to steward is personal revival. The same time with 6 a.m. is the same time we meet every time, but instead of just teaching alone, there will be activation. So what, what next, God? And, and the Lord was speaking to me, and God, boy, I want to recommend this book. This is what I'm reading right now. I don't know if it's a good way to show it. I don't know if you can see it, if I should go back or front. I don't know. The light is just bouncing on it in a way. Let me try and off the light. Maybe you see better. Okay. Open Heavens by Bill Johnson is his latest book. What I want to do is I will tell the team to get a link tomorrow because I don't know if it's in Nigeria yet. If you're in Nigeria and you're interested in getting a copy, I want to speak to someone that is in the UK that usually can help us ship it in. And, and she might help us. I'll ask if she can help us ship in for free or at a token. If it's available, right, I will let you know the cost. It will get in. So you can either pick up at the office or you can, we'll do a dispatch. You just pay for the dispatch. But I will let you know tomorrow. I beg you. I just, the forward I read two days ago, I was already having encounters. Just two pages I read today, my God, my life. Because some books are mantles. Hear me? Some books are mantles. Some platforms are mantles. I don't know about you. You come to some places that is an activation inside of you. One of the things most of the people, all the ministers, almost all the ministers, one of the things they said, in fact, Niger, when we're, when we're on another platform, was talking about everyone on this platform. One of the things most of all the ministers, if not all, said, at least 99 98% of ministers said this to me. You may see there's something about this platform. There is this hunger on the platform. There is this desire on the platform. There's this hunger. And guys, one of the, I know one of the things the Lord has blessed me with and is blessing me with is hunger. And I release it right now as I'm speaking right now for somebody that you're in this place of, you've been on the same level. Yes, before has come, you are pumped, but you find yourself struggling to keep the hunger alive. I just release the activation of the Holy Spirit. I release grace that you will perpetually be hungry for the things of God. You will pursue God. You will not be, you won't be satisfied by the wonder of yesterday. You will pursue an hunger for more in the name of Jesus. So one of the things I need us to understand is personal revival. And we're going to start this journey till, we, till maybe next week the Lord says otherwise. And I'm going to leave us with this question. Today, I want to ask, I want to say this. Are you ready? What will it cost you? Let's talk about what will it cost? What do you really want? What will it cost? And what do you really want? Do you really, really want personal revival? Do you really, and I want to open you up to what does it mean, personal revival? Revival literally means a reawakening, a coming back to life, a coming to life, um, um, the Lord restoring something to where it should be, how it should function. So imagine you are living a life of constant coming to life, a life of constantly being reawakened, meaning that there is no high and low. Every time there is an encounter, every time either you're encountering the, the God through his word, all right? So I want to look, I want to show us a few things this morning to prepare the ground as we pursue. Guys, God is eager. Guys, can I tell you, I know we are always, you know, God, God, the idea is never that we have revival. Listen to me. Revival is not just meetings. When we call meetings, revival meetings, we're just trying to, revival is going on. You have your meeting, it plugs into it. Do you get my point? 
Like you, you don't, you, oh God, help me. I will explain this. <laughs> it's a chain reaction. It's not just something that is supposed to happen for one month. Oh, I have a revival meeting one, just one month. And then the next month, there's no, no. There is a way we can enter revival and sustain revival. And I'm going to use a case study. And I'm using this case study because I've been there. All right. And yesterday I was on a call with someone, one of the one, a leader in, in well, she used to be a, a, a student in BSSM and their prophetic ministry. And she said something. She was talking to me about something. And I was just speaking, and the power of God was just happening. And she said, Oh, you know, I you know, for instance, in Reading, there's an open heaven. My God, it hit me. It hit me because I realized that truly there is an open heavens in Reading. What if? You can open, there can be open heavens in your house. What if there can be open heavens in your business? What if you can come into a, real, a, a reality where there's open heaven in your ministry, in your marriage, in your home? Is it possible? Have you watched all this um, science fiction movie that the portal, it's funny, please forgive me, the portal to enter the other world, a trans world or something is in one location. They are fighting to get to a particular location because that's where the gosha is. All right, can I put to you today, there's some people's home that are gushers. You enter some people's home and you cannot help but be joyful. There are portals, there are open heavens. So we're gonna be looking at this idea of revival, personal revival and open heavens. What does it mean to function in open heavens? What will it cost to maintain? Listen, you are not paying the price for redemption, no. But you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And I love the way Bill puts it. The reward outweighs what you give because even what you give is by grace. But can I tell you, I will lie to you if I tell you there isn't a cost. If I tell you there isn't a sacrifice. If I tell you that our lives should not be lived in a moment of constant surrender to God. I will lie to you. Sorry, give me a minute. I will be lying to you. I will lie to you if I tell you that there isn't a cost. If I tell you that there isn't a cost to following this Jesus. If I tell you that there isn't a cost to experiencing personal revival on a constant basis. Can I tell you what I mean by having a continuous personal revival? It means that, yes, you add them. Um, you, you, you never run out of hunger. You will never run out of your wonder, my God. I don't know if there's somebody excited about what I'm saying this morning, that your God is asking you, is inviting you to a life of perpetual encounter, a life of perpetual joy, a life of perpetual peace. Hear me, I'm not talking about just activity. I'm talking about that where you are in your moment, you are experiencing Jesus as you are, as you are reading the scripture, you're encountering God. As you are praying, you're encountering God. On the road, you're encountering encountering God at the place of work you are encountering God even while watching movie you are encountering God while having conversation my God I'm saying a life where God is present 247 the reality of living a life where God is present 247 and I'm not talking about how many hours at all so the first thing because there's so many things I want to talk about this and now if you know me if you know me, that this, by the grace of God, this is my heartbeat, that everybody will encounter Jesus. Everybody will live a life that is being revived on a daily basis. Everyone will come. To, I'm telling you guys, it is possible. And I'm using case study of, people, of places. And I'll show you how they have been able to steal what guys was on this call. I was sharing with you a testimony in better. That testimony is more than 10 years now. A testimony where the Lord was blessing people with a thousand dollars. They were in a meeting, a small group meeting, and the word of and the word of not the word of uh, word of prophecy. Yeah, came out. The Lord is going to give everybody here ten thousand dollars. Now, when I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about money. I'm giving you an example of how they've been able to steal what encounters. I was speaking with somebody yesterday that said I got used to seeing um, gold dust and fe angels' feathers. They see feathers while worshiping. Can I share this with you? And let me tell you the power of stewarding of these things that as we share it, if you are hungry enough, guys, there are times I've seen things and I realize it's my hunger. And that's why there's some things I am learning not to uh, expose my spirit to. When Afrika was saying this thing about what you are listening to, Dama was saying the same thing, what you're seeing, what you're saying determines how you stay under the realm of open heavens. You have to be conscious of the environment. They gave that testimony 10 years ago till today. That testimony is still reproducing itself. 
Since today, that testimony, the last time I shared it here, somebody came to testify. About two, three people testified about the Lord blessing them. Even myself, when I was done sharing that testimony, I got a testimony. What are, how, um, how, how have they been able to steward such a thing that they are living a life of open heavens that when you go there and you're truly hungry for God, you contact it and you go, my God, get ready, guys. If you have not listened to anything that will have been said, this is a season of activation. This month of November, some of you will strike a chord that you will never be able to recover from. Some of you will eat a gusher that will forever keep gushing. Some of you will come to a place of encounter under this open heavens, there will be clarity of vision, clarity of who you are. If there's anything I love to say. Um, John the Baptist was so clear that he was not the Messiah. Some of us who don't understand that. Give me a minute. Cola. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me clearly, please? I had to do that because rain is falling. Just type in the comments if you can hear me clearly. Yes, you can. All right, thank you. Jesus, John the Baptist was so sure he was not the Messiah. That is one of the things I'm, expect I'm expecting God to do in this season as we study personal revival. My scripture for today, I have two scriptures and I want you to go and think about it because the Lord told me I'm looking for just 12 people minimum if I can find 12, if I can find 100, that is saying, I am ready. Let us go on this journey of discovering open heavens and personal revival. When I use the word personal, because the moment one person is on fire, you can spread the fire. The moment is like the God gave me an illustration of a candle. One person burning can light up many people. So what am I saying? Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Heaven's kingdom realm can be illustrated like this. A person discovered that there was hidden treasure in a field. Upon finding it, he hid it again. Because, because of uncovering such treasure, he was overjoyed and sold all that he possessed to buy the entire field just so that he could have the treasure. Evan Kingdom Rem is also like a jewel merchant in search of rare, rare pearls. When he discovered one very precious and exquisite pearl, he immediately gave up all he had in exchange for it. Oh, shalabaka. Da, 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 da. Let me read this, um, this to you. The most accepted interpretation of this proverb is that Jesus is the treasure. But Jesus thought that the field is the world. The, the breakdown is this, for a believer doesn't sell all he has and then buy the world to find Jesus. It is more to see, it is possible to see that Jesus, what we're saying, so start that, what I'm trying to say is that personal revival, you find a treasure. We find a treasure. God found us, gave up everything to find us, reconcile us back to God and gain everything. Now, what are you willing to give up to gain everything in Christ. Will you find a treasure? He kept it, sold everything he had. What I, guys, what do you really want is the question I want to ask us today. As we talk about personal revival, as we talk about revival, listen, a lot of us get excited when we hear the word revival, but we don't understand what we are talking about. It's more than a meeting. It's like creating a culture of open heavens. It's creating a culture where your life is being transformed from one level to the other. So what God does is that there are meetings you will attend. There are platforms you will be part of. There are communities you will be in that they already they activate such desire. But at the end of the day, what will sustain revival is people partnering with God for the long haul. People partnering with God for the long haul for the long walk, for the long journey. People say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, I was smiling when Iwo was talking about our air. We're in a generation that we don't understand consecration. Can I tell you, if you really walk on this journey, I'm not telling you about five things to avoid. No, these are things, conversations you will have with God. They are not just the Lord will put in your heart and tell you, darling, I don't want you there anymore. I don't want you doing this anymore. I don't want you, no, I want us to have this, this level 
consecration is not to bend the hand of God. It's really to position you in full alignment, no distraction, bull's eye to eat what God is saying. How many of us are ready? So what is the cost going to be? I'm going to, I'm going to read one more scripture and I will, I will pray because I want you to think about it because as we're about to step in this water, like Gideon's guys, how many of you are ready to step in to say, Lord, I am ready. I've read of things in scripture. I've heard of things in scripture. I am ready. I have tried. I've done activity for a long time. I want to engage with what will, what will cut, what will transform my life forever. How many of us are ready? Kalobo shata by Adaba Kosokata. Enda loko shata by Adaba Kala. Luke chapter one. The cost of favor. For you to experience this open heaven is like God. May your face shine upon us. Let your face shine upon us. That is a prayer of favor. Let your glory, your favor shine upon us. But can I tell you, sometimes favor comes with a cost, and the cost is that you are marked. Favor comes with the cost that you are marked. It's almost like you are marked, guys, for life. And we're going to look at the story of Mary. Picture this, like you and I, we're ready for what God is set to do. You're ready. And then Mary is there planning a marriage. And then the Lord comes to interrupt. Sometimes favor is an inter divine interruption. The angel came and said to Mary, you have found favor in the sight of God. This AKA, you found favor in the sight of God. Grace be unto you. You are anointed with great favor. Mary was deeply troubled. They say you are favored. You are deeply troubled. Because all these greetings, okay, where are we going with this? He says that do not yield to your fear, Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen you, has chosen to surprise you with a wonderful gift, my God. With a wonderful gift. Guys, do you know what that is? You're going to birth what has never been done before. And you're going to live with a stigma that to today they think that you, you gave birth to an illegitimate child. To today, if you read later in the, in, the, in the Gospels, there was a time the Pharisees were saying, we will know who our father is. Almost like, okay, who is your own father? Because they believed, who will you explain? You would think that God will come and say, I impregnate, I was the one oh, that gave Mary Bele. Please don't judge her. But God never did that. Between you and I, Mary, you know what we carry. Are you okay with that? Mary, I'm the one that's put this seed inside of you. I'm the one inviting you for personal revival. I'm the one giving you these dreams and revelation. And people might not understand. Some might think you are even possessed. But you know, staying in the word of the Lord, that this thing that you see is the Lord. And is ushering you into himself. The Lord is giving you instructions. And that's why it's dangerous to preach your personal revelation. Let's preach the principles of Jesus. All right? So the Lord is instructing you. Don't do some things, do some things, calling you all of a sudden. You can't go to some, you can't do some things. And you're wondering, but other people can. And you're wondering, God, what is this? And the Lord is saying, I found you found favor in my sight. Oh, shalaba kolobo satayada. I'm trying to lay a foundation as we go in. I'm going to show, I'm going to show you what are the paths. How do you sustain? How do you experience open heavens that will birth personal revival and you sustain it? How, how do you get to that point? Mary, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. And the only people that knew when this matter happened, Mary, Mary is uh, Joseph, um, Elizabeth, uh, maybe some of our extended family, Shepherd. That's all. That's all. There was no, but like the Messiah was born, my God. The Messiah was born and there was no billboard anywhere. So when I'm talking about personal revivals, I'm talking about God for open heavens. I'm not just talking about, oh, so something that the old world. If you might be carrying such a priceless gift vision that right now only the people that know about it is just you and two others. And God is okay with that. But look at where the gospel is today. Look at the impact of Jesus today. Yet when he was born, he was even born in a manger. So what am I saying to us? What is the cost? Are you ready? What do you really want? My last scripture is Jeremiah 29, verse 14. If you use message translation, it said, when you get serious about finding me, about finding me above all else, you will find me, God's decree. God is saying, when you get serious, you want me? Are you sure it's me you really want? Are you sure? And when I come, I come with my own agenda and my plan. Are you sure you want this personal revival? Because when I come, I come with my own plan. 
what you've thought the reason your business is, I can tell you that that's not the essence. I can tell you that all this journey, this place you have been going since, that's not where I've sent you. I can tell you that I'm, I'm redirecting you here. I can tell you how many of you are ready for that which you are crying for. How many of you this morning, as we pray and get ready for what God is set to do as we step in. Because yesterday, this morning, I felt like God opened, was saying that, and you see, even for me, are you ready to step in? Are you ready to step in? Guys, when you come before God, I, I've said it before, when you have been with God, you, you have truly been with God, you never want to be without him. He said, you can count on it. That's it. When you have truly been with God. No, 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 no. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29 from verse 14. Jeremiah 29, 14. When you have truly been with God, when you have truly been with God. So this morning, the song in my spirit is, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you with all the nothing. I like Paul, what I'm talking about this morning. The Lord just dropped this in my spirit again. In the book of Philippians chapter three, Paul was saying to them, if I'm to boast, I'm a Jew of all Jew. But he said, I consider it as nothing. He said, yet all my accomplishments that I want to credit for, I have now forsaken them. I regard it as nothing compared to the delight of experiencing Jesus Christ as my Lord. To truly know him means letting go of everything from my past and train all my boast on the garbage heap. It's all like a pile of my not to me so that I may be enriched reaching the reality of knowing Jesus and embracing him in all his greatness. My passion is to be consumed with him. My passion is to be consumed with him, is to know Jesus more, is to ensure my heart is guarded and preserved. That so when the glory begins to come, when the glory begins to show up, I don't take his glory. I don't get in his way. Lord, you can knock me out. Lord, yes, Lord. When I mean that by that is when he was wrestling, when Jacob was wrestling and they knocked his heap. Whatever I need to, whatever, whatever is the cause. But guys, this prayer is very weighty. Do you really want that? Do you really want that? The little I know about my life is the fact that some days I cry because what other I, what people can just do, I, I just can't do. The, 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 the joy of stewarding your heart with the Lord, ensuring that nothing pierces that heart, ensuring that you, you are carrying God's glory with such level of responsibility, humility, and love. Ensuring that mammon has no place in you. Ensuring that you are not using God to get yourself famous. Are you really ready for it? We are people of your presence. We will wait and we will stay. We fix our gaze on you, Jesus. We will wait and we will stay. We are people of your presence. I will wait and I will stay. I fix my gaze on you, Jesus. I will wait and I will stay. In your progress report today, I want to give you an assignment. I want you to ask the Lord. Lord, what will it cost? <laughs> what will it cost to live under the realms of open heaven? To live conscious of what Jesus has done? To live a life that is full of, that you are experiencing God on a daily basis? What will it cost not to have rising and falling moments? What will it cost? Can I tell you one of the things? You must be a student of the word. You must. I, told, I said to someone yesterday, the fact that you don't take permission, you don't create time to take him to take in breath you cannot uh, yeah, sure. i'm trying to create time for god that's the problem he is an option when it becomes the all in all you you know you can't function without being with him so what happened is every other thing you plan around god not plan god around your schedule plan god around all, all every other thing you want to do and i pray the lord will bless us this morning in the name of jesus i'm asking you again what is it going to cost what is it going to cost to build according to pattern? What is it going to cost to follow God exactly? To follow God with your whole heart? What is it going to cost? What is it going to cost? Ask the Lord, God, what are you asking me to do? 
Are there things I need to give up? Are there things I need to embrace? Are there things I need to do? Ask the Lord this morning, write it down and look out for God's instruction as you go through the day. Look out for what he will nudge your heart into. Look out for his instruction and write it out. Write it out. But guys, can I tell you something? Get ready for what God is to do. Let me read something I saw. And I, I, I jumped because I felt like, wow, I never knew. I never knew. One of the things we're going to be examining is how to, the, the definition, definition of revival, burden of sustaining revival and God's goal for revival. But that's not where I'm going. There's something I saw that, that's really, that threw me. There was a man and he said, he is a man. Right, that's it. I, I'm going to, and I pray over, yes, I read this because it's just put in by someone, but this is exactly my heart. Years ago, I heard of Dick Est, Estman, Eastman, one of the great fathers of prayer in the earth, speak concerning how he carries a bag of seed on his shoulder. And this seed is spiritual hunger. Hmm. Everywhere he goes, he throws that seed and people become hungry for God. Ladies and gentlemen, I know of one thing with all sense of humility, that one of the things the Lord has done for me and one of the graces, one of the burdens of my life, on my heart, is spiritual hunger. And everywhere I go to the glory of God, I've seen the Lord take these things and pour it on people. And that's why I'm not surprised when Pastor Shego, Pastor Femi, a lot of people were saying to me, my sister, Kika, that PI, let me see, there's something about people are hungry. And this literally, they were like, when they come on this part, people, you're pulling. And I just pray for anyone under the sound of my voice once again, come into a season of perpetual hunger for the things of God. In the name of Jesus, let there be an impartation over you where you will not just be, you, you will just love God. You will respond to his love. You will pursue him. You will read the word. You will pursue in prayer. You will just be hungry. You will just be seeking. You will not be able to rest. A lady came for when friends prayed years ago and she said she could not stop praying for seven days. Her mouth could not shut. She had such an encounter that her mouth just kept beeping. She couldn't keep her mouth shut. I pray for you. You will not be able to remain without going deeper in your hunger for God, without going deeper in your pursuit for God. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow as we go in, look, exploring the, your dreams, stewarding dreams, stewarding encounters. What do you do? And then we'll begin to look into also, we're going to do a bit of um, word of knowledge activation tomorrow as well. But we are moving in that way for this open heavens, guys. So when the Lord said, come alive, it's Zika 37. Dead come alive. That's what God is saying. So we're coming alive. Personal revival, guys. I, I've had moments, I've read my journals. I'm the same prayer I'm praying as what I'm praying. Father Lord, I don't want to be tired. I need to be disciplined. I've been praying. Same, same prayer. I saw my journal of 2010 again yesterday. Same prayer. Same prayer. But one thing I can tell you, I've never had a better yes. God keeps propelling me. God keeps propelling me. Even if I want to, I, I, it's too late to give up. He keeps propelling my heart and has given me the grace to obey. And that's something else you need to learn. The grace to surrender and obey at all costs. And the Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And I'll see you to, tomorrow. The team will drop the link for yesterday's meeting so you can go back and listen. You guys, go back and listen. Go back through. If there's anything that jumped in your spirit, even from referral, go back and listen. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day. The team will be here for a bit to share all the things you need. Amen. Get ready. Don't forget your progress journal. Write into it. Get friends. If you have friends on this call or if you're in a Telegram group or you have friends, just call them. You guys do your progress. We are coming to the end of the week. Make sure you do your presentation. Go over your progress report of the week. Make sit down with the Lord. Discuss with God. Ask questions. Write down. This is no joke. I'm telling you, you're learning how to steward seasons. You're learning how to steward encounters and your life will never remain the same. Amen. God bless you.